field of geotechnical engineering and material testing, it happens that a certain sample of aggregate and soil from the field is too large for a certain testing. The problem would be that if you get a testing size from the field sample for a laboratory testing, would that testing size enough for maintaining the representative nature of the samples? Will the result of the laboratory testing of the testing size truly represent the characteristic of the whole mass of the aggregates and soil from the site? The answer would be found in ASTM C702-98 or shall we say the standard practice for reducing sample of aggregates into testing size. It covers the reduction of field samples to the appropriate size of both cores and fine aggregates for testing while maintaining its representative nature of its whole mass. It employs techniques that are intended to minimize variations in measured characteristics between the test samples so selected and the field mass. sample is reduced to a smaller test sample size required or convenient for a test. ASTM C702-98 provides procedure for reducing samples to the size required for testing. This process ensures that the smaller test sample is most likely representative of the larger field sample and thus of the total supply. There are three methods for reduction of larger sample that are discussing in this video. The method A is using mechanical sample splitter or universal splitter. Method B is a process called quartering method. Method C is a procedure called miniature stockpile sampling. The moisture condition of a sample should be considered when choosing a sample reduction method. Method A or mechanical splitter is appropriate for saturated surface dry aggregates or drier than SSD. While method B and method C or quartering and miniature stockpile respectively is fit for dump sample. The method A can apply for all kinds of aggregates and that make it as universal but only for dried sample. Method B or the quartering is generally used regardless of its moisture condition when the mechanical splitter is not available. Method C or the miniature stockpile is only for dump fine aggregates and not permitted for coarse aggregates and combined aggregates. Here's the summary for the criteria of what should we choose among three methods of reduction of field sample into testing size. Method A employs the use of mechanical splitter. It is composed of a gated hopper, even number of equal width shoots, and two receptacles are catching fans. If the sample is a coarse or combined aggregate, then the shoots must be a maximum of 8 with a width of individual shoots approximately twice the largest size particle in the sample. And if the sample is fine, at least 12 shoots is required.
For the procedure on doing the splitting of samples in the mechanical splitter, first place the original sample or portion thereof in the hopper or pan, and uniformly distribute it from edge to edge being sure the sample appears homogeneous. Carefully introduce the sample into the shoes in a manner to allow the aggregate to flow freely through the openings and into the catch pans. Continue this procedure until the entire sample has been halved, being careful that catch pans do not overflow. And then remove the catch pans and set aside the other one. Continue splitting the half one of the material. Follow this procedure, being sure to split entire increments until the desired test sample size is obtained. Retain the unused material until all desired tests are performed in case a retest is needed. Method B employs the use of a hard, clean, level surface or a canvas blanket. Quartering is generally used in a situation where adequate mechanical splitter is unavailable. The instruments generally used in the procedure are slicer, trowel, brush or broom, canvas blanket, and a long stick. In using a hard, clean, level surface, it is always a good idea to brush or clean the surface before you begin the procedure. Place the sample in a hard, clean, level surface that will not contaminate the sample. Brush every utensil that will use during the procedure. To ensure the material is thoroughly mixed, it must be turning the entire sample over with the shovel or trowel at least three times. With the last turning, shovel the entire sample into a conical pile. Then carefully flatten the conical pile to a uniform thickness and diameter by pressing down the apex with a large plate so that each quarter section of the resulting pile will contain the material originally in the pile. The pile diameter should be approximately 4 to 8 times the thickness. Divide the flattened pile into 4 equal quarters. Remove two diagonally opposite quarters, including all the fine material. Successively mix and quarter the remaining material in the same fashion as the original sample. Continue this process until the desired quantity is obtained. Another alternative procedure in quartering is using the canvas blanket. It is used whenever the surface is uneven. The filled sample may be placed on a canvas blanket and alternatively lift each corner of the blanket and pulling the blanket over the sample toward the diagonally opposite corner causing the sample to be rolled. It is similar to the first procedure on turning the entire sample over with the shovel at least three times. After rolling the sample through lifting the blanket, flatten and divide the pile as described in the first procedure. Or if the surface beneath the blanket is too uneven, insert a stick or pipe dividing the pile into two equal parts. Remove the stick leaving the fold in the canvas between the sample halves. Slide again the canvas blanket at a right angle to the first division and dissecting the two sample through their centers. Lift the stick evenly from the fine material and clean the area. Successively mix and quarter the remaining material until the desired is obtained. Use only for a damp, fine sample. Method C or the miniature stockpile is procedurally very identical to method B, which is the quartering method. Only that a conical pile is not required to flatten and a small sample or a small scoop is used to obtain a desired sample. For procedure, place the field sample on a hard, clean, level surface where there will be no loss of material or contamination. Mix the sample by turning, shovel the entire sample into a conical pile by depositing each shovelful on top of the preceding one. Obtain a sample for each task to be performed by selecting at least 5 increments of the material at random locations from the miniature stockpile using a sample thief, small scoop, or spoon. Remember, in every laboratory testing, the aggregates in the soil sample must be undergone first in reduction method. If it is inconvenient or the time wasting, then prepare a set of sample already reduced into a testing size for all laboratory tests. Make sure the desired testing size for each test is achieved. Again, it is important to do the reduction of field sample into testing size by a variation method in order to retain the representative nature of the whole mass of aggregates.